Hi there, Jeep owners. Today in 2020, Jeep Wrangler Unlimited, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install Roadmaster's diode wiring kits. Now there are a few different kits available. The big difference between them is which kind of cable you'll get to attach from your vehicle to your motorhome. We have a kit available with no cable, which is the one that we are installing today. But we also have kits that come with coily cables, which is ideal if your tow bar has no cable management. We have ones with straight cables, which is ideal if your motorhome's tow bar has cable management, so you can slide it through those channels. And lastly, we have a hybrid cable that is part coily, part straight, and that's typically used in a setup where you have cable management, but maybe you need a high-low adapter and there's an extended length between your motorhome and your vehicle, so you need a small section of coil to ensure we don't have anything dragging on the ground. There's five main components required to flat tow your vehicle behind your motorhome. Your base plate being one of the main ones for your vehicle here. This is the attachment point where our tow bar is going to connect, as well as our safety cables. Our safety cables are also part of our setup that we're going to need. It's a supplemental connection in addition to our tow bar. The tow bar is also necessary, which is the connection between the motorhome and the vehicle. It's what allows you to pull it behind you. You'll also need your diode wiring, which takes all the lighting signals from your motorhome and transfers them to the lights at the back of your vehicle so people behind you know your intentions when going down the road. And lastly, you'll need your supplemental braking system, which will apply the brakes in the vehicle when you hit the brakes in your motorhome to help it come to a safe stop. And here at the back of the Jeep, you can see our left turn signals operating as well. What I really like about this kit is that it uses our existing lights on our vehicle, so everything looks very factory, and there's really nothing that you'll have to mess with in the vehicle. Some of the other options you've got are magnetic lights that you have to pull out and set on top each time. Another issue with magnetic lights is that you may not have a magnetic surface on your vehicle for, to attach it to. A lot of the panels here at the top on newer vehicles are made of a plastic or composite material that's non-magnetic. And on a lot of the Jeeps here, they come with soft tops and you're not gonna stick anything to that either. And there is another option called bulb and socket, which you don't have to fiddle with, but you do have to modify your housing assemblies here. With this, we do no modifications to any housings. We just have to splice into the wiring. The diodes act as a one-way check valve that lets the motorhome signals come to our light and illuminate the light, but prevents them from backfeeding into the rest of our electrical system affecting our vehicle. This will keep everything safe on your vehicle so you don't have to worry about any electrical issues down the road. If your kit came with a cable, you're also going to get a six-pole connector with it. This is the most common attachment point that you'll find at the front of a vehicle for a flat tow setup. And the reasoning being you need at least four wires on our connector here. So usually you have a four pole flat for lighting. You have to have a minimum of your lighting circuits, but having a six pole gives us some extra options for additional accessories and components. We're using a six pole because in addition to our lighting circuits, we also needed a spot for a charge line cable. If you had just a standard four pole, you'd be stuck with the lighting and you have to just run another extra wire that wouldn't be part of your connector. Once you've got everything installed, don't forget to plug in your cable and connect it to your motorhome. Then you're ready to place it into flat tow and hit the road. We'll begin our installation at the back of the vehicle by removing both the driver and passenger side taillight assemblies. To do this, we'll want to open up our lift gate door here so we can access the covers inside that will expose the hardware for the taillight assembly. There's a small notch here on the cover. We'll take our flat bladed screwdriver and put it in between there. And just give it a little twist and that'll pop it up and we can set our cover aside. Inside, you're gonna find a plastic bolt that has a 10 millimeter head on it. So we'll take our 10 millimeter socket and we're just going to remove that bolt. It's not in there very far. As you can see there it is. We're just gonna set that down. And then our taillight assembly knot will pull out. So we're just gonna slide it out of there. And the red tab here on the back, just push that out to where it's released. And then you can press down on the release tab here and disconnect the electrical connector. We'll then set our taillight assembly aside and remove the other side in the same way. We've now got our wiring that we're going to be tapping into here. You may need to strip back some more of this black tape that's on there. You can a lot of times just unravel it, but um, having a little bit more of it off 
kind of like I've got here, will make it easier to access and tap into your wires. We're gonna be using pin one, which is a yellow wire, and pin four, which is a white wire with a gray stripe. Separate both of those out, and then we're gonna cut these wires. This is for our tail light and our stop turn signals. And then we're just gonna take our strippers and we're going to strip back each end of the wires that we just cut. And then on each end that we strip back, we're gonna take our diodes here and we're gonna be putting the blue spade terminals on each one of these. So we'll just take the wire, I like to give it a little twist just because it slides in a little easier. Grab our crimpers, just slide the wire in the back side, give it a squeeze to crimp it down. I'm just gonna repeat that now for the remaining three. Next, we're gonna to need to take the wire that comes in our kit, pass it through the bottom. There's an opening here in the bottom that's really easy to just shove it up. And then you can grab the other end and pull it through. Now your wire does have four wires on it. And you're probably wondering why do I only see three here? There's also a green wire attached to that. I snipped between that one and I pulled it off because the green actually goes over to the passenger side. So I just kind of peeled that down and left the green wire hanging down below. We'll now take these three wires and we need to separate them out. So just like I did the green wire to leave that one down below, just get a little snip in between the wires just like that. And then you can start peeling them to separate them. Now these ones we only need to peel, separate them enough just so they can easily connect to the diode. So that's gonna be plenty. We'll then strip each end of these back. And what we're going to be doing here is our white wire is gonna serve kind of a multi-purpose. That's our ground wire, but we don't need the entire length of the ground wire here at the back. So we're gonna be using a small portion of it back here to take our brown wire, which is our tail light wire, and jumper this over to the passenger side so that way the tail lights work on each side. So we'll take the brown and the white then, and we're just gonna twist these two together since we're gonna be jumpering with that white one. And unlike the ones we used before, this one is going to get a yellow spade terminal. It's a little larger diameter on the inside to accommodate the two wires that we twisted together. We'll just slide this in and crimp it on. And with our yellow wire that we've got there, that one's just going to get another blue spade terminal. Now that we've got everything connected, we can start hooking up our diodes. The big thing to remember with the diodes is that on your out, you have a single, and on the in, we have two, and the out is always gonna go towards the light, whether it be a bulb or LED, and that's always gonna be on our connector side here. So we're gonna start with our yellow wire coming off of our connector, which goes to the stop turn circuit on our bulbs. That is our out to illuminate the bulbs. The in is just going to reconnect the yellow wire that we had cut it from originally. And then since this is our stop turn circuit, we're going to use the yellow wire that we routed up. So we're just gonna bring that guy up, peel a little bit more off, and then just slide this on to the other side. With our other diode, it's gonna be pretty much the same. The out is always gonna to go towards the lights, which is our connector side here. This is for our tail light circuit, the white and gray wire. The other end of this, we're just gonna reconnect back where we cut it from, the other end of the white and gray. And our tail light circuit is going to get the brown with the white wire that we've got here. So that'll just slide on the other one. At this point, we can take the adhesive backing on the back. You can stick this onto the surface on the inside to hold them in place, but it can be difficult to plug your tail light assembly in and remove it in the future if you ever have to replace bulbs and things like that. So I recommend you just take the two and just stick them together. Because then we can take our diodes here and we can just zip tie them to the rest of our wiring. I just try to center it a little bit on the wire so that way there's plenty of relief on each side of our diode and snug it down. 
We can now reconnect the connector to our tail light assembly and then reinstall it in reverse order of how we removed it. Once you got it clicked in, you go ahead and push the lock tab back in place as well. We're now down below and we routed our wiring across, just attaching it to the hitch here as it goes across. And then we routed it up to our passenger side. Along with that, we did also route part of that white wire. Now in order to do this with the white wire, what I recommend doing is taking the green wire here that you need to route over to this side. When, you've, when you're peeling it back off of the main section, after you've got it peeled back, kind of eyeball it up, holding it across to make sure you can go up. And then you can take that green wire and then just fold it back and run it down the remaining wire that you have. And then when the, where the green wire ends, that's where you're going to take your white wire and you're going to cut the white wire and then strip it back. And we need the white wire that's connected from the taillight assembly over there to reach over to this side. So that's what we've got here. Well, then I'm going to route it up and make our connections over here on the passenger side. I've already made the connections here on our wires over on the passenger side, but it's going to be just like it was over on the driver's side. We're going to be using pins one and four. The colors just change over here. Pin one is going to be green and pin four is going to be white with an orange stripe. We cut those just like we did and put blue spade terminals on them. And the two wires we routed over here, the green and the white, those also got spade terminals put on those. So then we just got to hook all those up. So the green wire that we cut for our factory is for our passenger turn, our right turn signal. And that's going to be the green wire that we ran over. So that's why we've got both of those on this side. The white wire run over jumpers, the tail light circuit from our brown wire over to this side, and the tail light circuit for our factory wiring is this white wire with the orange stripe, so that's why we're tying in there. We then started running our wiring towards the front, and we take it here and we go above our heat shield and our exhaust, staying above that and connecting it to the factory wiring that's located just a little bit further forward. From there we stay zip tying it to that factory wiring around our suspension components, until we come out here next to the fuel tank. This is where the other end of our white wire is that we'd cut and we need to attach this to ground. And we can get ground by just running a self-tapping screw into a ring terminal here on the bottom right into the frame. Make sure you're going into a raised section like this. We don't want to go directly into the floorboard of the vehicle. We want to make sure our self-tapper doesn't intrude inside. I've gone ahead and stripped back the white wire now. We're going to take the included ring terminal here and we're just going to crimp it right onto there. We'll now use the included self-tapping screw to run it into the channel up here. You will likely need an extension to do so, and you'll use an 8 millimeter socket for the self-tapper. Then you just want to make sure it's nice and snug, and then we can continue routing the wire forward. Once we come over the frame rail, we're just going to run it down along the outside of the frame rail because it's going to be much easier to do so over here. And our exhaust pipe being here, we want to stay away from that, so we're definitely going to be safe on this side. So we just stay all the way on the outside of this frame, going all the way forward here, staying underneath our running boards until we get here to the front just behind the wheel. From here, I went ahead and poked it inside the frame because we can then pass through the inside of the frame here. You can just pass it from hole to hole. It's pretty easy to do. And then we come out the bottom right here. When we come out the bottom here, we stay along the bottom of the frame. We zip tie the brackets and component as we go. And once we get here towards the front, just in front of the rear axle, we went ahead and just slid it through the opening in this metal here. And then we went up. And all we do when we went up, we just go over top of this beam right here, this black beam. We just go right over it and then come right back down. We went up and over because our steering mechanism right here, we want to make sure that our wire is going to stay clear of its path because this bar is going to want to move back as this, this arm here pivots. So that'll ensure we stay clear of that. And then we just zip tie it to the frame here until we come out right here at the front to our base plate mounting location for our wiring. Now that we've got our wire routed to the front, you want to take a look at the end of your wire here. If it's bare like this, then you should have gotten a six pole connector with your kit that we're going to be connecting it to. The other options, you may have gotten the four pole version where it has a four pole flat trailer connector on the end. If you're just going to be using it mainly for lights, then your four pole flat trailer connector is going to be fine for your flat toe setup. But if you need to add any additional accessories, you're definitely going to want to go with the six pole here. 
So we're going to be hooking up a six pole because our customer does have some additional accessories. And in some cases, these accessories may be necessary to flat tow. One of the things we're adding to this one is going to be a charge line kit, which is going to ensure the battery stays charged up every time you reach your destination. Now, if yours didn't come with a six pole connector, but you want to upgrade yours to one, we have those available here at eTrailer.com. But now that we're here, we're going to show you how to hook it up. We're going to take some of this excess that we've got here off because we don't need all of this. I do always like to leave just a little bit of excess so you can pull it out to make repairs and things like that or add additional accessories in the future. Now that we've got it cut to length, we'll take each of these wires and separate those. I'm just going to cut in between them. And then we're going to peel it back just a little bit, just enough to where we can easily make our connections. I've gone ahead and stripped back all four of these wires because we're going to need two to make our connection. We're then going to take the boot that comes on the back of our six pole connector and we're going to slide it on. And if you have any additional accessories, you might as well add those now while we're doing it. So our, our customer opted for a charge line kit. So we're just going to slide that charge line kit wire in there. And I'm just going to bend that one back because that's not part of our diode circuit. So now we've got our six pole connector here. And there are four wires we need to connect for our lighting. One labeled GD, which is our ground wire and our white wire. I'll unscrew that one. One labeled LT, which is our left turn and our yellow wire. Then we want the one labeled RT, which is right turn and is our green wire. And lastly, we want the one labeled TM, which is our taillight circuit, which is the brown wire. We can then take each one and we're just going to poke it into its respective labeled circuit. You can see the labels on the end. So white is ground, GD. We're just going to poke it in. And then we're just going to screw that screw right back in, clamping that wire in place. Once we've got this done, we're just going to go around repeating that for each of the remaining wires. So here you can see we've gone ahead and made all those connections. And I went ahead and connected the charge line wire to the center circuit. Uh, so that's going to make sure that it connects to the charge line on our motorhome as well. So we're going to take now some dielectric grease and fill up this back here. It's going to help keep out any moisture, ensuring we have a long-lasting connection without any corrosion. And it's okay to go pretty heavy with this. I kind of recommend it. We're just going to put on there pretty good. That's just going to make sure that everything stays protected from the elements. We can then slide our cover on. And then I like to use some electrical tape around the front and back to just hold that all together. And this is just going to seal up the front and back to further help keep out that moisture and also help keep your boot in place, sealing in that grease. We can now take our connector and just mount it up onto our mounting location here on our base plate. The hardware comes provided with your base, base plate for mounting it. So we're just going to slide those screws in and then use our eight millimeter socket to tighten them down. And since our Jeep here is pretty exposed, we want it to look nice. So we use that included wire loom here to cover up wherever you would be able to see it. Once we put our bumper back on the rest of this here, you're not going to be able to see. We've got our bumper back on and all that stuff. And we're now we're going to put our underbelly on, but the underbelly is not going to fit. You'll see here where I did it to make some modifications to the undershield in order for it to fit as it is going to slip around your new base plate just like that. And then we can get all of our clips back in. On our undershield here where we cut it out, you'll want to cut it about an inch wide to slide around it easily and you'll want to cut down about six inches. You may also want to take a little inch off the top here near it so wiring and things like that can pass through as well. Once you've got it all trimmed out, we're just going to reinstall it in the same way that we took it off. With our connector and everything complete and our fascia all back together, we can go ahead and test everything out. You can plug it into the back of your motorhome or a tester like the one we have here. You want to make sure you have your left turn signal, right turn signal, tail lamps, and brake lamps. 
if everything's working properly, then we're ready to hook up our vehicle behind our motorhome and go on our adventure. And that completes our look at Roadmaster's Diode Wiring Kit on our 2020 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited.